two finely balanced ties take center stage in the UEFA Champions League on Tuesday as the quarterfinal stage concludes. Live Champions League scores Manchester United head to Barcelona for the second leg hoping to overturn a 1-0 deficit from the first leg against Lionel Messi and co. It will be a tall order for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's men, but he more than anyone knows that even the impossible is possible at the now camp. In the other quarter-final second leg there is an intriguing clash as Juventus host Ajax with the scores locked at 1-1 from the first leg in Amsterdam. Cristiano Ronaldo is working his way back to full fitness but the likes of Dusch and Tadic will be aiming to secure another famous away win after they dump training Shams Real Madrid out in the last round. Below is the full schedule for Tuesday's games, while we will have you covered here at Pro Soccer Talk with analysis and reaction from both games. Tuesday's UCL quarterfinal, second leg schedule Barcelona v. Manchester United 3 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff Barcelona led 1-0 in aggregate, Juventus v. Ajax 3 p.m. ET kickoff 1-1 on aggregate, follow at JPW underscore NBC Sports Thierry Henry may be nearing his next move following a short-lived stay at Combustible Monaco. Multiple sources tell Press Soccer Talk that Henry has been in talks with the Red Bull Global Soccer Organization about taking a coaching role within one of the clubs. Recap Barker 3-0, 4-0 AGG, Man United. The natural reaction would be to link Henry with the manager's position at Major League Soccer side New York Red Bulls, which has struggled out of the gates at 1W2D3L after making a quarter-final run in the CONCACAF Champions League. But there's plenty of change within RBGS, which also operates RB Leipzig in the Bundesliga and Red Bull Salzburg in the Austrian Bundesliga. I think we can rule out Red Bull Ghana, Red Bull Brazil, and Austrian second-tier side FC Liefering. This report comes a day after former New York Red Bulls boss Jesse Marsh was announced as the next manager of Red Bull Salzburg, and Henry was a celebrated assistant to Roberto Martinez with the Belgium national team. And RB Leipzig will have a new boss next year, when 31-year-old Julian Nagelsmann leaves Hoffenheim to take over for Ralf Rangnick who Marsh assisted this season. Henry earned his first managerial job in October when he took over for Leonardo Jardim, whose much changed as Monaco was fighting relegation. That run lasted three and a half months before Monaco restored Jardim to his post. Monaco is now 16th, well off the usual European pace, and Jardim's minor revival has been buoyed by a bevy of January moves including Adrian Silva, Cesc Fabregas, Fode Balotore, and Gelson Martins. Armis went the 3rd of March 13 in taking over for Marsh midway through last season, and took the Red Bulls to the Eastern Conference Finals where they lost to eventual champions Atlanta United. Would the Red Bulls' European hierarchy cut ties with Armas so early in the season after such an outstanding finish last season, especially after the club didn't do anything major to offset the sale of Tyler Adams to RBL? No offence, Mark. Jartkowski. Or could negotiations amount to bringing Henry onto Marsh's staff? The two did not cross over at Red Bull Arena. To play devil's advocate, there's also the attendance boost that could come with bringing Henry back across the ocean. It certainly could buoy both young and old within the RBNY team and it's not difficult to remember that buzz that followed Titi's move to the New York, New Jersey area. Follow at Nicholas Mandola Paul Lionel Messi, what with his off-kilter sense of time. The Barcelona superstar scored twice in Tuesday's defeat of Manchester United, which moved into the UEFA Champions League semi-finals. For Messi, it achieved a goal of reaching this stage of the tournament, which we hadn't for a long time. Recap Barker 3-0, 4-0 AGG, Man United, or four years. Leo, four years is not a long time for most clubs to miss the UCL semis. 
Though most clubs aren't Barcelona, and no one's like Messi. The megawatt attacker scored a fantastic goal before completing his brace with the help of a David De Gea gaffe. Overall, the 3-0 win was just what the Argentine sought from his side. It was spectacular, Messi said. This is who we are. We were cold and nervous for the first five minutes. I don't know why, but then we took control. Now Barker is within two successful rounds of giving him his fifth UCL crown, which would tie him with Ronaldo and nine others for second most all time. He'd also be the first Barcelona player to win five European Cups, and slide to within one of all-time leader Paco Hento's six with Real Madrid. Barca's last semi-final came in 2015, when the club beat Bayern Munich and then Juventus in the final. Follow at Nicolas Mandola even neutrals can feel the tension in the air as Premier League powers Manchester City and Tottenham Hotspur collide in the second leg of their UEFA Champions League quarterfinal on Wednesday. UCL, Ajax as Juve, Barca passed Man United, Spurs emerged from the first leg with a terrific 1-0 scoreline coming off the boot of Hung Min Sun. That means no away goals to Pep Guardiola's potent city, a draw, or a scoring one goal loss will be enough for Spurs to advance at the UCL semi-final and a date with Ajax. We have a small advantage but everything can turn very quickly so it's important to come here with ambition, to stick with our basics as usual but if we come here with the mentality to score goals it's going to make the game harder for Manchester City, said Spurs goalkeeper Hugo Lloris. We know it's going to be tough, we're going to suffer, but it's important to be ready in our minds not just to defend but to be ambitious in our performance. The mentality is very important in a big game like this one and we'll see what we will deserve. On the City side, there's good news in that Pep Guardiola's possession-based, attack-heavy model doesn't yield a lot of chances and the players will be well drilled when teams play on the counter. Pep Guardiola obviously knows how to motivate players, but he used the press conference to get City supporters in the right frame of mind. He basically dared them not to find a high level at the Etihad Stadium. For the Manchester Evening News, do it for the guys, they are so proud. Guardiola said. We need them in our bad moments, at this stage we cannot go through. I want to see that they want to get to the semi-finals, not just the players, the fans too. I want to see that. Meanwhile, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool would need to fall flat on their face at the Estadio do Dragao, relatively speaking, to avoid a second straight semi-final. The Reds hold a 2-0 advantage after one leg at Anfield, which means Porto would require a three goals or better win to advance in Liverpool's place. That's not to say Porto lacks the firepower to score, but one goal from the visitors means the hosts will need to bag four. Liverpool has only allowed three goals once this season, in a 4-3 defeat of Crystal Palace, and last allowed four against Roma in last season's UCL semis. Follow at Nicholas Mandola Chris Hewton hasn't been denying that Brighton and Hove Albion has been in a relegation battle, but Tuesday's 2-0 loss, 18th place Cardiff City means the table tells the story plainly. The Seagulls are up against it. Recap Brighton 0-2 Cardiff City, we have a fight on our hands. Hewton said after the loss sung for Seagulls to within two points of the drop zone, albeit with a match in hand on Cardiff. This is a proper fight. We have to make sure we turn it round by staying together, digging deep and making ourselves hard to beat. Cardiff had won just one match in seven coming into Tuesday, and sat in 18th since a week 28 loss to Everton. But six of its 31 points on the season have now come at the expense of Brighton, and Neil Warnick thinks his men have what it takes to pull off a great escape. For the BBC, we had a few pundits say it would be our final game in the Premier League but we are alive and kicking. We deserve tonight. 
Dot dot dot. We came out of the traps and enjoyed it today. We are far from finished yet. Brighton plays two matches by April 23rd, while Cardiff just faces Liverpool. The final three matches for both teams will be staged on the same days of the calendar. Here are the nine matches involving each team the rest of the way. Brighton has a 12-goal advantage on Cardiff in terms of differential, Saturday, Wolves v, Brighton Sunday, Cardiff City v, Liverpool April 23rd, Tottenham v, Brighton April 27th, Brighton v, Newcastle and Fulham v, Cardiff May 4th, Arsenal v, Brighton and Cardiff v, Palace May 12th, Brighton v, Man City and Man United v. Cardiff there are scenarios where relegation, the Premier League title, and a top four place will all be determined by goal differential for Brighton and Cardiff against the two Manchester powers on decision day. In a year which saw so many setbacks and the horror of its record signing killed in a plane accident, how incredible would it be for Cardiff to come back from the brink? Follow at Nicholas Mandola Let's Block Ads. Why?